Hey guys, the new patch, patch 8.9, is coming out in about a week's time, and we have some pretty big changes we're going to probably cover today. I do want to know what you think about these Lux ones that we're going to get into in a second, so let me know it down in the comments. They seem to be buffing her like every single patch. By the way, I am so happy to announce that we have partnered up with SteelSeries again to give some free stuff away on the channel. To kick this off with a bang, we're going to be doing an Arctis Pro headset, Rival 310 mouse, and a QCK Plus limited mouse pad. To win, you just have to go to the link down below and enter. No funny stuff, super simple and hopefully I can keep doing these and giving more away to you. If you want to check out my setup, what I'm using right now, I'll pop that down there as well, but let's get into our biggest changes. First up to Kennen. The short version of the changes are that the damage from your W every fifth attack and now uses way more of your AD, and when you activate it, it's going to be using more of your AP. Your E, your lightning rush, is pretty cool though too, uh, giving 30 to 70% attack speed if you hit an enemy champion with it. I know some of this is obviously buffing the AP version, but it seems like AD Kennen should be a lot better, right? When you have some more ADs, some more attack speed, maybe a Rage Blade, that would be perfect, right? You get AD, ability power, and attack speed from that. You'll stack your W even faster, and then you'll be using that extra AD ratio on your W a lot more. I think this makes it much better 1v1, dueling, pushing as well, and 70% attack speed is like kind of the same as rank 3 Tristana Q. It's a lot to get for free. Don't get me wrong, I love playing Ken in bot lane. I would do it if these buffs go through, but didn't they kill AD Kennen because it was super annoying? Like they stopped Runins increasing the amount of W procs that you could get, and nerf the AD ratio on his W. Either way though, I bet with the new Rage Blade, we could open up a lot of cool new builds if these buffs happen. So as I said, we have even more Lux buffs. Uh, they're coming onto the PB here for this patch. And remember in 8.7, the cooldown refund was buffed for ultimate. They gave her another 20% rank one, and it has that new effect where it can proc if they die within 1.75 seconds of taking the ultimate damage. This time though, we've got pretty much everything else except her passive, like her Q will be doing a bit more damage rank one. It will have a lower cooldown and a lower mana cost. Her W will be shielding for more, it's more useful. Uh, her E has a few nerfs, like a bit smaller and slower, but it's less mana rank five and a lower cooldown. So I think what this actually means, like for Lux in general, uh, more utility, right? And a bigger shield for herself, a bit more damage on her combo from her Q, and she can spam her E even more now. Especially with cooldown reduction, you can get that down to like a five second cooldown. So every five seconds, you're going to be poking with your E. That seems pretty insane. Lux won't just be like a combo monster with her ultimate to snipe people down. She will actually have better poke. If she isn't meta after these buffs, I would be really surprised. Like, what would they have to do to actually make people play her? So after I was actually done with this video, Riot decided to update the PB again. So I'm going to throw those new changes up on the screen so you can see them. But I really want to talk about the Mundo one. His ultimate regenerates a percentage of his maximum health over 12 seconds. That is why you stack health items. Uh, but that amount is now going to go up to 50 to 100% depending on the rank. At rank 3, you basically have to kill him twice unless you have something to reduce the healing amount. He is going to be an absolute massive, massive tank with this and he will survive for a long time time in a fight. A normal tank can maybe absorb like 3,500 damage or something like that. That's what you need to kill them. Mundo could need up to 7,000 now. If anything, this almost forces you to spend your gold on a healing reduction item and delay the rest of your build, which is not going to be a bad thing either. The other ones are pretty cool, like the Garen ones, for example. Uh, Ziggs as well, getting a bit more damage from his minefield. But the Mundo one is definitely the one that could really make a difference. We did mention a while ago that Unsealed Spellbook was going to be removed from the game, but it was a bit different. Um, basically, now though, Unsealed Spellbook will just be reworked. It will stay as a keystone, but be different. You won't be able to swap your summoner spells permanently throughout the game anymore, but you can swap it for a one-time use summoner instead. So if you start the game with uh, Flash and Ignite, for example, you could swap your Ignite for Teleport, use the TP, and then that summoner would go back to ignite. Also, to stop you abusing it, you would have to go a uh, TP, then change to ignite, then to exhaust, and then to cleanse before you could go back to teleport again. Basically, you have to swap three times to a different summoner before the first one can be used again. Also, every time you swap, it permanently decreases your swap cooldown by 15 seconds. Initially, it takes three and a half minutes before you can do it again, and you won't be able to use this until five minutes into the game. I think this is probably a little bit of a more balanced version of what we have right now, but the thing is, this has no summoner spell cooldown reduction on it at all by the looks of it. So your flash cooldown and your teleport cooldown or whatever will be standard unless you buy something else like Lucidity Boots. It won't give you any itself. This will be a bit more niche now, I think, like you wouldn't take it on everybody, but you'll be able to use it in a few creative ways to make a lot of plays. You could be taking heal, for example, for team fights because you really want to have that at that point, but you could then swap to ignite if you're about to all in somebody and try and kill them. I think in that way, it could actually be pretty cool and we'll see people who actually understand the keys don't use it really well. 
sticking with some mage changes, we have really big ones. So first of all, we don't know when this is going to come in, but there is a change list for Azir that they are working on. The damage of your soldiers has been slightly increased. Main thing would be up 25 per hit at max rank. The recast time has been lowered and the pass through damage on champions is up to 100% the entire game, but it is pretty big. It's saying like, okay, your fighting potential is still going to be beastly, like kind of an AP version of an AD carry. DPS wise, he's actually going to be better. But the thing is, we're going to be taking a dump on his wave clear and make it so you cannot hit more more than one minion anymore and you can't push your lane. That part might be brutal to be honest. Having next to no wave clear uh, makes it very hard to play mid lane, much more dangerous and harder to have any control as well. Another thing we talked about earlier this week was a Rise rework where they turn his W into a slow and his Q into true damage, but that has been delayed until most likely 8.10. That is about a month away roughly uh, the patch after this one and when it comes back it will probably look slightly different. We have a lot of other big maze changes though that will affect everybody else as well, starting with a Doran's Ring nerf. There'll be less mana regen on there. It doesn't give mana back when you kill minions, so you will run out of mana a lot faster. Now, that should be relatively okay because of our next change. To kind of compensate for that, play around it, uh, mana regen level 1 has been increased a little bit, and you'll have a bit more base mana level 1 as well. The part we're going to care about though is our mana per level will be halved for almost all mages that would have built a Doran's Ring first item. It's pretty much every mage. You can check a full list in the description if you want to, but if you don't want to get a Doran's Ring now, you will run out of mana a lot faster, but I think most people are going to buy this anyway. Apart from Doran's, it's mostly about this mana per level being halved. That will impact mages way more than any of this other stuff. It means that by the time you go into team fights, you should have lower mana pools to poke with. And if you spam or like stay out of base for a long time, you're going to run out of mana. It should also make taking Ocean Drakes a little more important or blue buffs as well uh, before fights. But I guess that more depends on how mana intensive your champion is. For a lot of poke mages, that will probably hurt a lot more than want to poke before a fight. Or actually just champions that want to spam a bit to wave clear like do that and you won't have the mana to fight with which makes you a very easy target to kill we're also going to be having a few ap item changes the main ones really are to mana stuff like lost chapter and tier lost chapter is going to be 200 gold more expensive up to 1300 now the ability power increased by 10 and mana restore on level up increased from 10 percent to 20 percent this is like basing for a bf sword now it's way more expensive but it does give you a bit more for your money as well it's supposed to be one of those things where you're going to have to save for a bit more now or have to base a few times to get components before you actually get it but either way you won't be getting the mana restore passive as early into the game now for the tier it's only 100 gold and more and the mana cost reduction down to 10 percent so it's not as bad and obviously this will affect champions outside of mid lane as well like ezreal but more than anything it probably means that you'll be getting fully stacked tier items just that little bit later into the game you'll probably be running out of mana a bit more with the cost reduction being lower and remember you gain a percentage of your maximum mana as ap or ad2 with these upgraded items so with less mana per level now now, you should get slightly less AP with an Archangel or a Seraphs. So we do have a bunch of other AP items as well, like Medjai's is getting a little bit of a buff, though. the glory needed for the move speed bonus has been lowered to 10. Not that everybody gets this that much, but I guess it's a little bit less of a risk to buy it. Remnant of the Watchers, the support item, is going to have its base mana regen halved as well, so supports cannot spam their spells as much. Banshee's Veil, Fiendish Codex, Rylai's and Zonyas will all have 5 more AP, and Twin Shadows will actually have 10 more AP. Hextech and Ludens are going to have 100 more mana on them. Uh, Hextech is going to have its slow decay up to 2 seconds, which is a bit better, and Ludens Student's Echo is actually going to be 100 gold cheaper. Those are kind of small buffs, so they're not major obviously, but they should help offset less mana per level a little bit. Only a little though, it's nowhere near as much as you're going to lose. Spellbinder is the last AP item here getting a change. It now gives more AP as base, 20 more, but less on the active, and it's definitely really good. You would much rather have AP all the time for all of your spells and not actually have to press something to be able to do more damage. We're going to go into our last champion changes now, they're a bit different. I mean, the first one is a mage as well, like Syndra's passive Q upgrade has been changed from last two seconds longer to plus 15% damage versus champions. It might mess up some of your combos a little bit if you're trying to like stack your balls to ultimate, but with plus 15% versus champions, like when you have a lot of AP in a death cap, that is going to be a really good damage boost. Her win rate is really low though for a mage right now, like right at the bottom, so she might need even more before she's going to become meta again. Ivan is getting a little bit of love, like small buffs though. He should be good in this meta, I think. A lot of people to protect aren't sensors really good. We have some good ADs for it, and games are a little bit faster, which really suits 
shoots that annoying gank style that he can have. Q being easier to hit will actually help your gank success chance as well, which might give you a few more leads in games net a kill if you're not as accurate as you should be. Poppy is going to have a few changes, which are really weird. It's kind of like a few buffs and a few nerfs. She's going to have lower move speed base anyway, and her passive range is going to go up. Her W move speed will be lowered and armor and magic resist lowered by 5%, but her E range will be up slightly. And if you don't charge your ultimate, the knockup duration is always 0.75 seconds. Surely though, reducing her armor and magic resist bonus by 5% is not really going to help her become meta again. Maybe they think Poppy is too strong, but when was the last time you saw her running around and wrecking everyone? Honestly, these two changes are weird as well. Zack changed the Shivana one afterwards. I I'm not sure, like they're giving them more damage, but not base damage, more damage if they build AP. I know AP Zack can work and it can really hurt in solo queue, but that's not the normal build that we see. Maybe they are trying to get you to stick some AP in there and make him meta without being a full like tank meta slave, but it seems a bit weird. I mean, Q is nice, 20%, your ultimate getting 30% more. They are good AP ratios to have, but you don't really build AP that much. Shivana is even weirder. Like your W is gonna have its 20 percent AP ratio completely removed. E is going to use 10% more of your AP and your ultimate when you fly through the air, that damage uses 30% more of your AP up to 100%. Your burnout is going to be most of your damage. It's the thing you max first. It's kind of like a rebalance more than anything else. And it seems like a nerf, but how many AP Shivanas do you see running around anyway? Okay, finally then, last one, Warwick. The first nerf he has had in so long, and it's just taking 2% maximum health damage away from his Q at rank 5. You do max this first, so you are going to be feeling it mid-game at least it is maximum health, so it's a fair bit of damage, but it's not going to be that massive. Maybe against the tank, you'll feel it more than anything else, but he is by far the easiest, the most kind of brain dead, honestly, no offense, and strongest jungler you can play for solo queue star games. I think when you're that good, you might need a little bit more to tip him off the top of the ladder. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and look into 8.9 though. Let me know what you think about any of the changes or the Lux one. It seems a little bit strange, but for now, I will leave you with the robots.